It's Friday night, Michael is just taking a shower and I'm just over here boiling my pump parts and starting to pack because we've decided to go to visit my parents tomorrow and we're actually surprising them. I live for surprises, so they have no idea we're coming and they know that we have a birthday party in Queens in the morning and then they think we're not coming until Sunday, but we're actually coming right after the party. I'm very excited about that. Just eating a quick Glutino, gluten-free Oreos. And I had something I wanted to share. I don't have a tripod to use at the moment. As you can see, we're starting to pack for our trip. I was having this talk with my friend recently who also had a baby. We were just saying how one of the things that we didn't really realize before having a baby that is such a big aspect of being a new parent is the fact that your life turns in to this schedule. That is, if you decide to be a scheduled type of family, which we are. <sighs> I actually really wanna talk about this more in depth, but my knees hurt. To schedule or not to schedule, that is the question. I know it's like a big thing amongst parents to talk about having a baby on a schedule. And actually my TikTok video that went the most viral is my schedule with a seven week old baby. And there are loads of comments on it that are super nice and really sweet. And then there are also loads of comments of people who are really concerned that I'm on a schedule with Milo. Then you have follow-up comments from people that like work with babies saying that it's actually really good for babies to be on a schedule. I don't know what the actual answer is. I'm sure some people are gonna comment below and tell me if they think scheduling is good or bad. We as a family believe that scheduling is crucial. <laughs> I know that it can kind of feel a little bit like where's all the spontaneity and we can't just like do things on the fly because we have a schedule. So I understand the drawbacks of it, but the plus sides of it massively outweigh that for us. And those include things like having the ability for me to know when I can make plans, having a schedule of when I'm gonna work versus when I need to nurse or pump, knowing when he's gonna be down for naps so that I can make activities for him. He has music classes, he has a mommy and me group. And personally, I feel like he he and other babies thrive on some sort of routine and schedule, done. All that being said, this is what I was talking about with my friend, is that as a new parent, your whole life just becomes this schedule. And especially on weekends when you, you kind of feel like, okay, the work week is over, now it's time to relax. There's no relaxing. Oh, I have something in my eye. Yikes. There obviously is some relaxing and there's time off from work, but the baby's wake up time is still the same time and they still have their naps. If you want to be having a weekend, meaning like traveling around and driving places and going to do activities, you kind of do need to plan it all around this new creature's schedule. And that's been something that's honestly been a little tough for me and Michael. In planning this upcoming weekend, Michael and I just had this dinner together where like the whole dinner was us planning exactly what time we're gonna leave this party and then exactly what time we're gonna get in the car and ideally what time he's gonna wake up and when we're gonna feed him and when we're gonna put him down for the next nap and if we're here, we need the pack and play and if we're there, we need the bottle. I don't know, it's really a lot of coordination. So I'm not trying to scare any potential new moms. I just wanted to share that. For any other parents that might be dealing with life changes with a newborn, you're not alone if you feel like all of a sudden your life has become about coordinating someone's schedule. If you feel like you are a personal assistant to this baby, you are not alone. It's another big thing, packing with a child. This is something I spoke to my mommy and me friends about a lot. When you have a baby, it is impossible to travel light. If someone is like a, a minimalist mom, please send me your information. I would love to talk to you because Every time we travel and we go somewhere, even if it's for one night to my parents' house, which is 30 minutes away, we end up bringing suitcases. I mean, it is a big deal. Like my parents don't have a crib at home, so we have to bring our pack and play, which for people who don't know what that is, it's like a pop-up crib, play yard thing. That's a big thing. We keep that in the car trunk, but like if someone was not driving, like if someone was taking a train or traveling some other way, like have to carry that? Then you got the stroller and the car seat, which thankfully our car seat is our stroller. So that is a big time saver and space saver. If you're nursing, then you need all of your like nursing equipment and pumping equipment if you pump. If you are bottle feeding, you need all of your bottle parts and bottle brush cleaner and the nipple tops and <laughs> obviously all the baby's clothes. Now that Milo's swimming, we need his swimsuits and his sunscreen and his hats. 
and you want to make sure he has teethers because he has a tooth coming in. You don't just want him like chewing on the cat's toys at my parents' house, so we got to make sure he has teethers. By the way, I'm like pulling all the stuff out of here. He also has his baby oatmeal from Gerber and his purees that we have pouches of that we have to bring. You always say you want to travel light and then the packing time comes and you leave the house with five bags. So it's really difficult, but we're learning and growing every day. We see the different textures on the floor. This is our Yeah. Can you crawl to this dinosaur for mama? Hi. You want mommy's camera lens? Saturday morning. What I was talking about regarding packing, this is what I mean. So just for this trip, for the weekend, we have a suitcase. This is Michael and I are sharing this suitcase. This is my purse where I also put all of my like personal pumping stuff. This whole bag is stuff that's too small now. That was Milo's that we're bringing home to store in my parents' house for like future babies. That's a gift for the birthday boy. And then that doesn't even include Milo's stuff. So there's two bags in his room. One is his bag of clothes burp cloths, his things like his monitor, his sound machine, his sheet for the pack and play, teethers, his food and his kitchen supplies, that's all in one bag. And then another bag is his diaper bag with like diapers, wipes, diaper rash cream, medicine. We're bringing infant Tylenol because his tooth is breaking through and it's been kind of questionable each night as to whether or not he's going to need a little Tylenol. Here's what I'm wearing to the party. I have a new tactic for clothing that I wanna tell you about. I'm taking you into the office for a second. I have a new method, a new go-to method of picking out clothes in the morning because I found myself, when I look in my closet, I either think of outfit options that I've already worn and already put together and they just feel not creative and not new or fresh in any way, or I look at all my stuff and I have that honestly silly feeling of, I don't have any clothes. I'm in like this zone right now in my life of extreme paring down. Pretty much every weekend I go through my closet and stuff in my house and I create large donation bags. That's kind of my mantra for the moment. Do less, have less, want less, live with less. I have this new thing that I do, would highly recommend it. Go on Pinterest, type in cute insert season here outfits, cute summer outfits, cute spring outfits, if you have one article of clothing, say biker shorts that you want to wear but you don't know how to style it, cute biker short outfits. Scroll through Pinterest, find an outfit that sparks your fancy, and then make your own version of that outfit with things that you have. I've discovered old tank tops that I were buried in the back of my closet that I kind of forgot that I had, and now that I'm seeing them on Pinterest styled in a certain way, I'm getting re-inspired to wear them. Things that I was kind of over before, I'm feeling like, wow, I never thought to pair it with pants like this or shoes like this, that's actually really cute. So my new thing in the morning is wake up, go on Pinterest, type in cute style inspiration, and then emulate an outfit that I see from there instead of having to just pull it out of my own head. Sorry, I'm waiting for Michael to call me because that was a fun game. And I feel like he would like it. Yeah. It's for five and up. Yeah, it's good. Okay, not only do we have Michael's cousin's seventh birthday party today, but tomorrow we have my friend's kid's first birthday party. So Michael's at this <laughs> kid's store looking at toys as gifts and he is gonna call me again after he does some looking around. But back to where I was. I think some people are really creative and love waking up in the morning and picking out outfits and combining things in interesting ways and being stylish. I have to be honest, that never came naturally to me. I have, I'm creative with a lot of things in my life and I actually have to say, I am decently creative when it comes to picking out outfits and combining colors and patterns. It's just not enjoyable to me. And I know that is enjoyable for a lot of people. For me, it's like a stressful part of my day. And I have, a, it's Michael again. <laughs> Hey, we're going to this party now. 
I'm probably not gonna vlog, but one other thing that we are doing today that I'm really excited about is after the party, before we go surprise my parents, we are actually driving to a town out of New York City in the suburbs a town that we are considering for our future family. And we have started looking around at homes. As you probably know, we're here until next July. At least that's when our lease here ends. But we are starting to look at homes, which is exciting. And so we're going to one of the towns that we're interested in to just drive around and peruse. And I'm excited about that. Look at Daddy! Hi, yeah. Hello. He's six months. <laughs> Every time we get in the car for the past six months. Every time we drive, Milo is in his car seat and I sit in the middle next to him in case he cries to attend to him. And Michael's up here alone, like he's an Uber driver. This is the first moment, Milo's asleep in the back. I figured, why am I sitting back there? He's asleep. And so I climbed on up and I'm hanging with Mike in the front seat. And I just feel like it's it's the old days again. It's good to have you back. And we're just driving up out of the city, having a day. We're going to some new plant-based, gluten-free restaurant that we found to grab some falafel sandwiches. And then it's off for the surprise at my parents. Thanks for coming to my vlog. We're back in our typical arrangement. <laughs> We're surprising my parents now. We just got to the house. Allie's here. Allie's here. She's gonna carry Milo into the backyard. Oh my God, we're so excited. She's gonna carry him around and say to my parents, look what I found on the driveway. Are you here? Is the key in there? Yeah. Are you ready? You ready for the surprise? Right? Okay, yeah. Mama. First plate of egg. Yummy. 